Hi, Facebook. Welcome to Founder Friday. My name is Paulina Marinova, and I am your host. I am here with Haley Thomas, who is the founder of The Happy Organization, an organization that promotes healthy eating and physical activity to fight childhood obesity. Welcome, Haley. Thank you for having me. Of course. So, okay, so you founded Happy when you were only 12 years old, and that came from a very personal experience with your father. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. Um, well, when I was around eight years old, uh, my dad was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, and, you know, it stemmed from our family just really eating good food all the time. Both of my parents are from Jamaica, so mm -hmm. I always had, like, the best, most flavorful food in my life, but most times they were super rich or had lots of just over-the-top carbs everywhere, white rice with potatoes <laughs> and gravy, yeah. etc. And so um, all those things really built up over time for my dad, and... Um, when he was diagnosed, it kind of shook our family. And too. how old were you at the time? I was eight, okay. yes. So when he was diagnosed, um, it really kind of set the tone for something a little different, kind of mm -hmm. looking at exactly what were we eating and then how it affected not only him but our family as a whole. And so um, when we found out, my mom found out about the medication and the side effects, which at some time sounded worse than the condition <laughs> itself, like internal bleeding and things like that. Wow. And we just weren't sure we wanted to take the risk, so we switched to healthy eating and um, exercising more, and he was able to reverse his diabetes completely wow. um, without any medication at all. Okay, so, so then you had the idea of starting your own organization, is that yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay, and who helped you with that? My mom. Um, my mom is the co-founder of our Great. organization, um, but I'm CEO, so yes. <laughs> um, really... I think it's amazing to have a support system uh, like my mom and my parents as well, but she really has been just 100% on board. She saw the results um, that happened in our family and then also realized along with me that kids were lacking this information and resources to learn about healthy eating and cooking and nutrition, and so she just kind of said, let's go, and we did. <laughs> yeah, and um, the organization has done so well that you recently actually made the move from Arizona to New York yes. because you struck a partnership with, is it Harlem Grown? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Yes, um, we're really excited about starting up our partnership with Harlem Grown because they offer urban farming and gardening uh, lessons and classes for kids in Harlem. And so they're able to not only show the kids where their food comes from and how it grows, but also you know benefit the community by giving this produce away to them and so we're going to come in with our nutrition and cooking to kind of make a 360 so we're really excited about that so you have your own cooking show on youtube you've done ted tedx talks you've met michelle obama how have you done all of these things while balancing school well for me it's really always been about keeping my passion alive and i think that you know of course, my education is important, and I still put in so much work into making sure that I... Because you're in high yeah, school, right? Yes, yes. And so I'm homeschooled, so that way it can kind of balance out. I'm able to study the things that I need to and then also study the things that I want to learn. Um, like, I'm actually one of the youngest students at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition studying mm -hmm. to become a certified health coach. So by the end of this year, I'll be okay. certified, and I'm really excited about that. But I've always wanted to be a balance because I'm kind of a perfectionist-ish. And yeah. so, um, you know, if my grades were slipping, I would, you know, be upset. And if my passion, you know, didn't have that much attention, I would be upset as well. So just okay. had to compromise. Good. And so tell me, tell me about meeting Michelle Obama and Chelsea Clinton and whoever else you've met. Tell me about that. Gosh, well, <laughs> uh, meeting Michelle Obama for the first time, I was... Um, Ten. I was ten, 10 when I years old. Um, first met her, and that was really when I first started my journey um, through health act mm -hmm. advocacy and um, activism. And so, I really <laughs> like didn't expect any of that to happen at first. I gave a speech at uh, the Partnership for a Healthier America Summit, and the First Lady was also there. And I had met the former White House chef Sam Cass, and. He had somehow made it work where I could have like a solid 15 seconds to yeah. uh, talk to the first lady. And it was just the most inspiring thing. But I like tried to piece it together in my head because half of it was just like. Just the dream. Yeah. <laughs> in, in slow motion. And, yeah. Um, but she really just told me to, you know, keep on doing the work that I'm doing because it's important. And really that message has just kind of stuck with me today. Good. And so 
<clears throat> break down your day for me a little bit. Um, tell me, how much time do you spend working? How much time do you spend on school? What's your day like? Well, my day, it really depends. I love working ahead, especially in school. So, like, okay. um, the way that my schooling is set up, I can just, like, do a whole week in one day. And so, usually, I just take that one day to do it all. So, then the rest of the time, I can work wow. on programming or um, working on cooking videos, things like that. And so, usually, I just take, like, a whole Monday or something just to get the school out of the way. And then um, the rest of the week, usually, I'm, like, collaborating with my mom or... Um, talking about our n next upcoming projects, things like that, um, working on the programs for Harlem Grown. So really it's just a lot of, you know, getting things together for the new year. And Haley, what do you do for fun? What do you do when you're not working, when you're not at school? Um, I think what I do is fun, and I, I don't <laughs> consider it, like, as work. But do you hang so. out with friends? Like, do you oh, go well, ice skating? Of course. <laughs> I don't know how to ice skate, unfortunately. <laughs> um, I tried. It was bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really love playing tennis. Okay. I love shopping. That's, like, my thing. Girl. <laughs> of course. Um, and I do that with friends, of course. And um, Okay, so you make sure that you have time. You yes. don't feel like you don't have a childhood, or you didn't. Oh, no, not, not at all. all. Not at all. Um, I really... I mean, food is, like, a huge thing in my life, so anything yeah. relating to food is so fun to me. Um, going to new restaurants is, like, a whole mm. thing for me and my mom and my sister. We just, like, hunt out different spots and then, like, have a whole experience around it. Um, yeah. I love taking pictures of food, so if you go on my Instagram, Do you have a it's great basically Instagram? all <laughs> food. Um, but that those are the fun things to me, and just developing recipes, things like that. Yeah, and how did you learn how to cook? I'm I still learned, struggling yeah, with that. I learned from my mom. Um, again, she's from Jamaica, and so is yeah. my dad, but he doesn't cook. He doesn't cook. <laughs> um, he knows how to make porridge, but that's about it. Yeah. But um, my mom, she has always just been, like, so good at cooking, and um, even when I was little, like, three years old, I'd be sitting on her lap watching Food Network with her. That's really all that was on TV, so yeah. I just absorbed <laughs> it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I think I think everybody watching is wondering this right now. What is it like running a business at 15 years old? It's really um, fulfilling, I would say. It's fulfilling and it kind of feels awesome to be <laughs> like a couple of steps ahead and knowing what I want to do for my career and throughout my life. I think it just gives me like a feeling of not only accomplishment, but like, yes, I know what it is. I don't have to, you know, go on aimlessly you know trying to figure out what it is but really focus on this craft and perfecting it and I think it's just amazing that I can also help people at the same time. Is there another entrepreneur or CEO that you really admire? Gosh um, there are so many of course yeah. um, I really do admire Oprah of course yeah. uh, that's really one of the like last people I just have to meet um, you haven't met her yet. No, I haven't. You've met everybody else, but not Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one of my dream people, of course. But I really admire her because she, I mean, she's gone through so much and through all the adversity and mm -hmm. struggles and challenges, she still fought through to do what she believed was her passion. And I mean, look what it became. So it just kind of helps me to think about no matter you know how tired you may be, you have mm -hmm. to remember that you know this is what you're here for. And you touched on adversity. What's one of the hardest things you ha you've had to go through? I think a lot of people doubt me for my age, um, mm. especially in the nutrition world because it's very, like, science-y and you have mm -hmm. to be super specific about certain things. And, um, you know, I've had certain people say, you know, this kid is fat-shaming people or mm. things like that, even though, you know, none of those things exist. And so... Um, it's really important just to know that, you know, the knowledge that I have is important because I'm able to speak to my peers, right. um, not lecture them, but more have a conversation. That's what I've found is uh, successful for me. And I've also found a lot of allies throughout the um, past six years and organizations that believe in the power of youth and their voice. And so yeah. for me, I just kind of say, OK, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to keep on going because I know it's that important. And when you walk into a meeting with people who are older than you as a 15-year-old, how do you get them to take you seriously? Well, I take myself seriously Good. first. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think if I go in there with doubts about, oh, my gosh, am I saying the right words or, mm -hmm. you know, am I doing the right thing and I don't have a degree, so what am I supposed to do, you know, that type of thing, it's going to reflect. And so if I believe that, you know, what I'm saying is important, it will project that way. Good. And 
So what advice would you give, you know, many busy entrepreneurs who say don't have the time to cook their own food mm -hmm. or necessarily exercise three times or four times a week? Yeah. What advice would you give them on leading a balanced lifestyle? I would say that, the, you know, the most important thing, and I always say it, is you either pay for it now or later, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's time or money or um, whatever else. But really, you know, you can be putting in this time and effort to cook at home so that you're getting all these nutrients, you're feeling better, you will be able to work longer because you're running on natural and real fuel mm -hmm. from these foods, rather than spending, you know, the last five years of your life in, in a hospital bed, you know, and mm -hmm. those, that's your exchange. You have to really see the value in taking care of yourself, and you know, there's 24 hours in the day, so you've got to yeah. be able to fit in at least one to either prep ahead for the week or to exercise for 30 minutes. It, it really doesn't have to be like a big thing, you know, just as long as you're putting in the effort every day to, you know, further your lifespan and to be happier and healthier. Yeah. And you target um, children or young adults with your message, is that right? Yes. So how do you how do you get through to them and make sure that you're not lecturing them, but you're one of them? Um, well, I feel like I really am and will always be a kid at heart. I love kids and working with kids younger than me and my peers as well. And I think that's really what gets across. Um, most kids are used to hearing these messages from their teachers or mm -hmm. their parents, and usually it doesn't have that much um, like meaning behind it. It's just like eat your vegetables right. and that's okay and you know so um, for me the approach is telling the kids you know why it's important to eat your vegetables what it does for you directly rather than saying oh it has vitamin C mm. or things like that but actually saying oh this will help you prevent getting colds and things like that and mm -hmm. so actually directly connecting it and then of course reinforcing it with a delicious recipe and so I think with that strategy it's not so much as da 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 da, da these are facts right, and you're right. going to be sick but more focusing on you can incorporate all of these things and it can also be fun too that's great so Haley what's the best business advice you've ever received gosh the best business advice I've received um, I would say the best advice that I've gotten is probably well there's two things I think the first thing um, it's not necessarily about business, but it kind of ties in because as a business owner or a CEO, mm -hmm. I think you have to be strong within yourself. And so um, my mom and my dad, when I was little, they would always tell me before I went to kindergarten, be a leader, not a follower. Always mm -hmm. ask questions and um, just don't let anybody shut you down if you want to express yourself or learn more about something. And so I think that's helped a lot. Um, you know, I see a lot of kids who have great ideas, but they're scared to share them or um, need to know more information, but they're not sure if they'll get the answers. And so for me, that's helped me kind of identify it's okay to be myself and not follow the path of everybody else or, you know, want to do that, but to really discover what I want to do. And so that has been a great advice. And then another um, great tip that I got from a friend of ours yeah. was, you know, <laughs> especially with nonprofits, it's kind of difficult not to focus on, oh my gosh, we need to fundraise all the time right, and, right. and do things like that, but to really focus on the passion and the core of it and not to let that go, you know, yeah. to not let the money aspect ever kind of destroy the passion that you have for it. And so yeah. that's really been important because sometimes it's just like, oh my gosh, how are we going to do summer camp or how are we going to do this class? And just with that passion and persistence, um, really miracles can happen. Right. And you've certainly been a leader, um, especially I, I'm among your peers. You um, were going to school in Arizona, mm -hmm. then you were homeschooled, and now you moved to New York yeah. for this business, basically. So how do you see your future? What's next for you? What's, what's going to happen now that you're here? Uh, well, I'm really excited, of course, to expand our programs and um, doing things like that, reaching more kids. That's really the sole purpose of moving here. Mm -hmm. We're working on a couple of things, like a, issuing a school challenge out, and then we also are working on a program called a Happy Kit. So basically, a Happy Kit. Yes. So basically, what comes in it is all of the supplies for the teachers to lead cooking classes, mm -hmm. but also like a whole learning management system for the kids to go through all of these lessons through videos and games. And so it'll teach like things from what's 
the health benefits of broccolini to this is all about seasonal eating and GMOs and things like that, yeah. but taught in a fun and interactive way. And so um, we're really excited about offering these kits to attend schools coming up this new year. And so that's one thing that's definitely going to expand while being here. But also I really just want to um, use being here to be a platform to share more about my message mm -hmm. and um, it's a big market. Yes, exactly. Hopefully, like, do health correspondence or something health would be fun. Well, my last question is, what do you want to be in 20 years? Oh, my gosh, that's really <laughs> far away. Um, okay, uh, okay, it'd be 35. 35. Jeez. I know, I uh, know. I know. <laughs> it's like retirement age. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think 20 years from now, hmm. Um, I think 20 f years from now, I would uh, hopefully like to have, you know, the state of kids being educated about food and nutrition to be very, very improved by then. Um, would you want to still be an entrepreneur? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I honestly, it's hard for me to think about working for somebody else, like in a, oh, in a cubicle <laughs> type yeah. of thing. Um, so I, I would always want to do entrepreneurship. Um, I would also probably have a successful health coaching business by then, um, working with people one-on-one, -on -one, which is what I'm working on um, right now, and just have that going, of course. Um, hopefully okay. make my first million, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I like just, this. I like this. Just shoot big for the stars. Um, and to have Happy expanded all over the country and, and around the world as well, um, with facilities kind of like YMCAs, um, things like yeah. that, with like a full-on kitchen for everybody to go in like a demo kitchen and um, have it in schools everywhere so you yeah. have a plan you have a plan <laughs> yeah. well great thank you so much facebook thank you Haley, for thank joining you us for having me. and we'll see you next time on founder friday